Okay, so this is the last video from overseas. And I have two questions that have been asked. And Sophie Coase of Six, thank you so much for asking, Sophie Coase. So Sophie Coase wants to know why the palace hasn't released bullying reports on Meghan Markle, and will they apologize? Hmm. And then uh, Linda Joe says, uh, when will the Ukraine fighting end and repair begin? So I hope you like the video. I hope you like the video. If you do like the video, please do like the video. If you haven't uh, subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. <music>
clean and uh, Megan comes out clean too. Let's do three more cards on that. So will the information the palace releases um, somehow um, vindicate the palace and Megan at the same time? Maybe talking about a misunderstanding. Three more cards. One, two, and three. So, this is, these three cards will be regarding the information that the palace releases. Uh, the first one is, ah, being left out in the cold. So this could be uh, speaking to, uh, which it comes to my mind right away, is to that uh, perhaps um, uh, the, the Megan uh, and, uh, was left out in the cold in this situation without uh, thorough uh, guidance. Second card up in this is wishing things were the way they were in the past. This is the uh, Six of Cups. Cups are compassion. And by the way, this uh, pinnacles are always a uh, value. Uh, so being left out in the cold, uh, Megan's uh, value uh, wasn't uh, there. They want things to be as they were in the past. And then the final card is, <coughs> is this Page of Swords. And the Page of Swords talks to us about truth, justice, rules, and law. He's the very weakest of the court cards. And so this Page, page of Swords is probably just a very weak uh, message that the palace is going to bring up. And so we compare that with those first three cards right here where we said uh, the palace is uh, in charge of everything. They've got all the tools they need to make a thing happen. They're going to be in control of the spotlight and determine where that star is shown. <coughs> There's some temperance that needs to be involved. And then also over here, um, uh, we wanted to narrow down on what might be released. Well, the fact that uh, perhaps Megan uh, was um, left out of the, in the cold. They want things to be the way they were. And uh, it's going to be a very weak message of truth, justice, rules, and law. That's interesting. Will the palace apologize? I've got to leave for a second. I'm going to run and get some water because I'm starting to choke up. So this is going to be blank. And uh, I'll just leave this here so you have something to look at. But I've got to get some water or I'll just get coffee. You'll hear me talking because I'll go over here and, uh, and find something to get some water in. And uh, I'm presuming that you can hear me talking now. And uh, you've got to understand that I'm doing this uh, in a hotel room in uh, Darmstadt, Germany. And so my resources are not very good. And here I am with my cup of water. Okay, have a sip. Uh, that's much relief. So uh, will the palace actually apologize. That's what I want to know. Will the palace actually apologize? I'm going to leave those cards out, split this in half. Will the palace actually apologize? Three more cards. One, two, three. Will the palace actually apologize? In some way, shape, or form. Could even be a weak apology. Okay. Okay. So here we have long-term plans. Whatever the palace does is going to be involved uh, thinking of the long-term plans of Meghan and Harry and the palace and the monarchy. The second card up is the King of Cups. Okay. This is going to be Charles. Charles is going to come forth as a compassionate king. And the final card is the Empress. So what does the Empress represent? The Empress represents... You know, sort of a, a almost a mother nature kind of a figure, uh, being uh, in charge of uh, everything uh, fruitful. <laughs> Excuse me. You're just going to get it all on this video. Anything fruitful and productive. And so this, all of these cards together say to me, what we're going to get is we're going to get, um, just like if someone came to your home and um, you would want to apologize to them to let them know, um, uh, to be a gracious host. And I think that's the sort of thing we might possibly get from the palace, but I don't think we're going to get a clear acknowledgement of any wrongdoing. Kind of like, I'm sorry that you felt that way, or we regret that things got misunderstood. You know, that sort of thing. Now, the next one up here is Linda Joe. Linda Joe wants to know about the war in Ukraine. Uh, when will that end and repairs begin? So the war in Ukraine... When will the war in Ukraine end and repairs begin? I'm going to put out six cards uh, to be sort of uh, six months. Okay? So six cards for six months. And the first one will be July. Okay, so we'll take six cards. This is going to be one, two, 
three, four, five, six. I don't take one more card, which would be like a wild card if it's if this thing will have beyond six months. Seven. Okay, that makes sense to me. It might not make sense to you, but it makes sense to me. So we have seven cards here, and we're gonna say um, each of these uh, cards will represent a month, except the last card will represent after six months. Okay, so when will the war in Ukraine end? Let's just lay them out. One, two, so that's July, August, September, October, November, December, or longer. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Um, will the war in Ukraine end uh, in uh, July? Well, we have a, a card that's telling us holding on to value. Okay, so I, that doesn't uh, portend to me anything ending. So that's July. August, we have, okay, so we do have an end in August. Truth, justice, rules, and law comes to an end in August. Let's see what the rest of the cards say. That doesn't mean that this, this war is going to be over in August. Something is going to end in August. Uh, July, August, September. We have, well, this is putting things, something together for public display. It could be the beginning of a rebuild. Uh, July, August, September, October. The devil. So this can tell us that uh, October could mean that there's a lot of lesser intention there. June, so July, August, September, October, November. Leaving something behind. December, King of Wands, and then the final card is the beginnings and endings. This is fantastic. So the question Linda Joe asks is uh, when will the war end and repairs begin? And for July, we see that things are still holding on. Everyone's holding on to their value. July, August, looks like it could pretend the end of something, almost like the end of the war, but the end of a cycle, which could mean the beginning uh, uh uh, in September, of some sort of a plan to rebuild. Uh, so July, August, September. So October, uh, we run into ill intentions. November, leaving something of emotional, compassionate value behind. And then uh, December, is it July, August, September, October, November, December. December, we have the King of Wands. The, ki the Wands are actions, plans, motions forward, and the King is going to make a thing happen. So it looks like December could when, be when things really start to kick in. And then after that, in this kind of a wild card, is when a whole new cycle begins. So we had uh, holding on for now, a cycle finally coming to an end. We don't know what, if that's the war or just you know the beginning of an end of, of whatever that cycle is. Uh, rebuilding starting to happen. We run into some lesser intention, of course, uh, politicians. Uh, then we have leaving something of emotional importance behind. We have finally a firm plan starting to uh, take place. And then finally, sometime after that, some new uh, beginning, some new cycle starting over. So this makes perfect sense to me. I hope it makes perfect sense to you. Um, so that's everything I have today for everyone's questions, and I hope you like it. Let me know in the comments what you thought about my read. Well, that's what I have. I don't know uh, how accurate it is. You have to let me know. Tell me in the comments what you think about the reads. And next week, the, the on Wednesday, we'll be back to normal. We'll be back recording from my uh, office. And hopefully everything will be great. Thank you very much for all of you who keep watching. I so much appreciate it. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. So this is one of my all-time favorite uh, decks. So this is the Smith Waite uh, Tarot Deck, the Centennial Edition. And um, there's two boxes here, and I'll explain what happened. Is uh, when I was ordering uh, uh, this uh, deck, um, I think I think it was Amazon. I'm not 100 percent sure, but um, it wasn't clear that that one of the things I was ordering was just a deck of cards, and the other thing I was ordering was a commemorative set. Okay, so uh, we'll talk about them separately. So the cards themselves are terrific. So these are, as you may have heard me say, if you've watched some of my videos and watched me use these cards, uh, these cards are the um, supposed to be the uh, most true to the original artwork of Pamela Coleman Smith. This is her initial, Pamela Coleman Smith. Uh, th these are the closest to her original artwork or interpretation that she and um, and 
uh, weight uh, came to agreements on for the way they would be depicted. Before I turn these over, I'm going to tell you. So one of the things I love about cards is when you, there's something special you can use the cards for, a special way you can identify with the cards that's only secret to you. Maybe I shouldn't like that, but I do like that. For instance, uh, these cards, you can tell from the back of these cards whether they are upright or whether they are inverted before you flip them over. And here's how. In this uh, little um, uh, flourish here, uh, it's almost a rose in a rose. It reminds me a little bit of the Tudor rose, but it's, it's not quite that. But uh, if you are looking at this card, the back of this card, and you see this little leaf is, is sort of pointing in front of this signature, then you know that this card, when you flip it over, is going to be upright. However, if you see that the leaf is pointing behind the signature, you know that this card is going to be inverted. So see, a quick glance, it's not very obvious to you. But once you look at it for a minute and you know that secret, now you know what's going to happen when you turn this card over. So let's use an example. This one is pointing um, before the signature. So we can see that this card is in the upright position. This one is pointing after the signature, and you can see that it's in the inverted position. So, so there you go. Now, the cards themselves are great. I mean, I love the coloring of the cards. They've got kind of a, a grayish, um, a brownish gray overtone, almost a misty, kind of a London fog kind of a feel to the overall. It's like someone painted the cards and then went back and did a treatment on them to make them look kind of, so I'm not, I don't know if that's how Pamela Coleman Smith uh, created the art. I haven't seen her original art for this, obviously. Um, I'm sure some people have, but, um, but that's what's great about these cards. It kind of gives them a built-in patina. It's not real, you know, it's fake, but it still makes them nice and mystical. And so uh, that's what's interesting about these cards. Now, the, uh, at first I was disappointed that I had ordered two um, sets of the same cards, but then um, I understood that it was a good thing, and I'll show you why that is. Okay, so now this is the commemorative set of the Pamela Coleman Smith uh, artist of the Rider Waite Tarot deck, uh, featuring the Smith Waite Tarot Centennial Edition deck, which is this. So uh, it comes in this amazing amazing container. I mean, I can't even really call it a box. It's, it's like a beautiful showcasing a lifetime of artwork by Cam Pamela Coleman Smith. And um, so it's really cool. And wait till you see how it works. So you open this treasure chest up and you've got this beautiful uh, finish here and you've got wonderful little tabs where you can pull back the, uh, the covers and see what's inside. And what is inside is a, a pack of of the cards uh, and in truth what's happened is um, these were the cards that were wrapped up inside this box and uh, these cards uh, came in that box but um, I got this first and so I wanted to use the cards so I opened it up and oh look at that and I don't like that this has to be tucked down in there so there's a couple things that aren't perfect but uh, so I took the cards out of here opened them up started using them and then the other cards came and I realized oh well I can make this a complete set if I put these in here what's in here of course, you have the cards, and uh, then you have a nice little bag uh, to keep them in if, uh, if that's how you're going to keep your cards, and so many people do. But uh, I've just chosen to try to leave these cards in kind of a pristine condition. And then on this side is where all the treasure happens. The first thing you have is this booklet, The Artwork and Times of Pamela Coleman Smith, Artist of the, tarot, tarot, of the Rider Waite Tarot Deck by Stuart R. Kaplan and Lynn uh, Arjo, I suppose. So this is who wrote this book. In this book, it tells you all about, uh, you know, not all about, but it's, 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 it's a very good information about Pamela Coleman Smith. It's a lot of her art that's not related to tarot and explanations of how that art came to be. I mean, this is just a fascinating book and I love it. I love it a lot. So there's that. The next thing that was in here, are, these are actually postcards. Okay, so these are postcards, and all of these are the art of Pamela Coleman Smith. So, uh, and then this book talks about these postcards and why they come to be, and they all have a very interesting uh, story. So, which I won't go into now, but if you think you'd like to know, you should order these cards. So, very interesting uh, stuff here. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, next thing you're going to get is you get some uh, larger pieces that uh, this is. Pamela Coleman Smith, who I understand like to be called Pixie uh, as a nickname, and she's a lovely person. This um, is uh, someone that she knew, a, a stage uh, actress at the time, and um, 
and there's even a little uh, message down here. The the name of this person is Mistress Page, and then you are a you are Mary. So am I. Ha ha. Uh, Ellen Terry. So uh, I'm not sure now, but the the book explains all of this to you. Then you get, uh, this is an example of just some black and white work she done for, for, I don't know what it doesn't tell you on here, but it does tell you in the book. And then this is some more examples of what she might have done for playbills or uh, other ways. You know, artists have to make a living, so they use their talent of making art to uh, sell and, and do other things. So love, love, love everything that came with this. And um, amazing. Now, the final thing, and I've, I've lost the little uh, ribbon, but also this uh, has a ribbon here that, that helps you pull everything out, which is so smart and so good. I don't know who thought of it first, but it's a great uh, use of that. And then you have here the actual uh, pictorial key to the tarot. So some of you may have seen me using uh, this book, which is the pictorial key to the tarot by weight. And uh, so this is just another uh, representation of that, but just in a different book. And it all comes in here. The one thing that you're missing here, I don't think the cards are in this book. No, the pictures of the cards uh, aren't in here, but it's terrific. Everything else is true to that first book. Uh, this one, however, which I bought separate from an uh, online bookstore, uh, does have uh, depictions of the cards in it, as you can see. So that's very useful to use that all the time. So very handy to have. And then finally, like so many of these uh, decks, this gives you some uh, examples of some spreads you can use and how you might read them. And so everything, everything, everything about this um, this package uh, is exactly um, the best that you'd want to get in a, in a, in a gift. I've got, this is the one little misgiving here. Maybe I'll, I'll work on that later. But um, so nice. So that's been the tour of these cards. And I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now. One, two, three. You really make a big difference. Thank you.